Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is October 21st, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the world according to Monsanto. The most evil corporation in the world wants California to stop listing their herbicide as a cancer risk. Meanwhile, the battle continues over states' rights to label food containing genetically engineered crops. Then, ever wonder who would win in a wrestling match between Alex Jones and Bill O'Reilly? Well, watch this SmackDown exhibition between InfoWars and Fox News and find out. Oh, that's gotta hurt. And great Scott, guess who just got back to the future? Marty McFly arrives on October 21st, 2015. So let's examine five Big Brother predictions that the movie made, which turned out to be true. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> And we begin our show tonight with some very sad news. You may want to take a seat for this one. Vice President Joe Biden has decided that he is not going to run in the 2016 election. Of course, I'm joking and actually laughing about that. I'm not a fan of Joe Biden at all. Now, he listed the reasons as, you know, he thinks people should work more with the Republicans, you know, kind of the normal talking points. And he did have the actual tragedy in his life of his son passing away. And I do sincerely give him my condolences for that. But the other things that he has done and during his time as vice president, you know, he's saying that you don't need an AR-15. You can go shoot your shotgun off your balcony like your Yosemite Sam. And, of course, if you do that in real life, somebody's going to come and arrest you, not to mention all the uh, policies of the Obama administration that I do not agree with. I don't have time to go through them at all. High points, uh, Al-Qaeda and Fast and Furious. Let's just leave it at that. So I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, but I'm also not a fan of the people – that he's pretty much clearing the deck for one person in particular, uh, one Hillary Rodham Clinton. Is that her full name? I think that's her full name. And so with Biden gone, they're pretty much putting the laser focus now on Hillary. Of course, you got guys like Bernie Sanders and other people in the party, but you know she's the big gun right now. And some people in the Republican Party are actually pretty happy about that. They feel that they could easily whoop Hillary. You know, I'm if I had to guess at this point with Biden gone, I think it's going to be for uh, the big debates, it's going to lead up to probably Jeb and Hillary. You know, I could be wrong. I just don't see a guy like Trump getting the nomination, not saying I back everything Trump says and does, but he's a very popular guy, but I just can't see the Republicans putting their, much, their faith and that much trust into a guy like Trump. He's a little bit too much of a wild card as opposed to Hillary. We'll see what happens. I, I think right now she is pretty much in the lead. But as we're talking about Hillary... You know, we see all these reports about fake uh, Twitter followers, fake, you know, people on Facebook or whatever, liking all these politicians. You know, they got a million plus followers and people ask, well, how many of these people are actually real? But now it goes beyond the digital planes. Now they're actually enlisting people on their campaigns that don't even endorse them. And we have the article, three politicians call out Clinton camp for falsely claiming that they're endorsing Hillary. And one of these people is Wilmington, Delaware Mayor Dennis Williams. And he even went as far as to say that he'd rather see Joe Biden get the nomination. I guess he made these statements before Biden dropped out of the out of the race. And also the San Antonio mayor, mayor, excuse me, Ivy Taylor and Baxar County Commissioner Tommy Calvert. So all these people are saying that, no, I don't endorse Hillary. I don't know how they decided that I was endorsing Hillary. 
But, you know, it just goes to show the kind of hubris of these people that they'll say, like, yeah, it's mayor so-and-so endorses me. Then somebody calls up the mayor. Hey, are you a fan of Hillary? They said, no, I'm not voting for Hillary Clinton. What's wrong with you? And now people are asking, what's wrong with Monsanto? Because besides the fact all the rats are getting cancer from eating the materials, if their crops blow over into your farm, they say that you're stealing their products and all that other kind of silliness. Now Monsanto is asking California to pull a plan to list herbicide as a cancer cause or list their herbicide as a cancer cause. And the formal commit, excuse me, the formal comments were filed by Monsanto with the state's Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, part of California's Environmental R Regulatory Office. And on the final day, the state accepted public comments about its intention to list glyphosate as a cause of cancer. Glyphosate is the main ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup herbicide, as well in as well as many other herbicides. So as I said before, you know, you can go back and look at those studies, you know, people eating the Monsanto food, uh, you know, weight gains, all those kind of things, gut disorders as well. And particularly when it comes to the glyphosate, you guys may recall, earlier this year, we ran a story about Dr. Patrick Moore. And he's a guy who came out pretty much in favor of the pesticide lobby. And I understand, you know, not all pesticides, you know, just are Monsatan, but glyphosate in particular, and we're gonna throw, throw this back and show you his old comments and then we'll comment on it after the video's over. Let's take a look at this. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, yeah, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to actually, but yeah. not, not really, but. Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Ah, okay, so you, you, you. No, but I know so that. it's dangerous, I right? Know, I know people try to commit suicide no, with no, it and but, fail no, fairly regularly. Tell the truth. It's, it's not dangerous, dangerous to humans. No, it's no. not. So are you ready to drink one glass of no, glyphosate? No, I'm not an idiot. So once again, that's Dr. Moore. <laughs> and I just love this transcript that Mikhail has in the article. And he says, you can drink a whole quart of it. He said, hey, you want to drink some? The filmmaker asked. He said, we have some here. He says, I know it wouldn't hurt me. He said, okay, so you're ready to drink a glass of glyphosate. He says, no, I'm not an idiot. Because, yes, this guy understands that's harmful. Just like uh, if you want some, you know, proof of a product, you guys remember those old vacuum commercials. Was it Oric or whatever? And the guy would say, hey, my vacuum is strong enough to hold up a bowling ball. And he would go stand on, underneath the bowling ball while the hose was sucking it up. That's a guy who really believed in his product. But uh, Mr. Moore does not believe in his product at all and says it's perfectly safe and dandy for you and your children. Meanwhile, he won't touch a glass of it and says that he's not an idiot in pretty much saying that you're an idiot if you will come anywhere near it. Now, something that sounds like idiocy to me, LA City Council is mulling a gun lock law and changes to magazine limits for cops. Now, the stuff about the cops isn't so much concerning to me, but let's just think about this. This is a three to one vote. The Public Safety Committee advanced a proposed ordinance that would mandate handguns not in use be disabled and locked in a secure container under the threat of a $1,000 fine. Let's just stop right there. Because every time we go out to these, you know, uh, gun rallies and the anti-gunners show up, they say nobody's trying to register your guns. Let's not even talk about taking the guns. They say nobody's trying to register your guns. There is no gun registry. It's illegal. It's this, it's that. And yeah, I agree with you. There are certain laws that say that it's not supposed to be in existence at all. But let's go to the very common sense argument if I'm L.A. County and I want to fine people thousands of dollars for not having their guns locked or disabled, how am I going to enforce this? I'm going to go to the homes of the people who own guns. How am I going to know who owns a gun? I have a gun registry. I mean, it, it's like the most ridiculous doublespeak that has ever existed that there is no gun registry, even though they're going to fine you for not doing what they want you to do, and they're going to show up to your house because they know that you have a firearm. I mean, it's it, it just it sincerely leaves me at a loss for words that people can't understand this. It's like you know, I want to register. You know, uh, you know, like the health inspector shows up, you know, to check out your restaurant. How does he know that you have a restaurant because you have to fill out the paperwork to do it? You know, they come up and and check out your your taco shack or whatever else you got going on. So, or, or the other, you know, I don't think this is the case, but let's say they don't have a gun registry. Well, how are they going to check if you have a lock or not on your firearm? They'll have to go door to door like they did during Hurricane Katrina, which would actually be even worse. But also, I want to point out, the say, they said that the firearm has to be disabled 
and lock, which is to say, I guess you'd have to remove the barrel or you know disable it in some type of other way and then have it locked in the case. Now, personally, you know, I do have a gun safe and I bought my gun safe at a time that I lived in not such a great area where people would break into people's homes and I never had my home burglarized, but I know many people that did. So I took it amongst myself to go out and purchase a gun safe. Now that's for me and my situation. I don't have any kids, it's just me and my dog. Dog doesn't want to touch the gun. To her, it's just a big metal stick that's not fun to chew on. But some people do have kids. They may have mentally ill people in the home. You know, I said, I personally own a gun safe, but I'm not trying to mandate that for anybody else, especially if you don't have the gun in your use and they say you have to disable it, leave it in a locked thing. Well, what if somebody breaks into your house at three in the morning? Are you going to go not only unlock your gun safe, but then assemble it, you know, like your Forrest Gump, you know, set off the stopwatch and then shoot the guy. No, you don't have time to do that. Somebody breaks into your house at three in the morning. It's completely ridiculous. And these are the type of laws that we're going about. These aren't common sense reforms. These are things that are going to get you killed, you know, having to reassemble your gun and pull it out of a locker. It's completely ridiculous. Now, one of the big things going on today is it's Back to the Future Day. To anybody who knows what I'm talking about, the Back to the Future films, we're set pretty much today in 2015. And now Kit Daniels has an article talking about five things that actually came true, predictions that were made in the movie that actually uh, came to be. Now one that's not on the list uh, that David Knight pointed out, and we'll play this video, the uh, character in the movie, Biff, has a very strong resemblance to Donald Trump, and he was actually president in 2015. So let's go take a look at David's piece, and we'll come back and look at Kit's article. It was 30 years ago in 1985 that Doc and Marty went back another 30 years to 1955. Then they went back to the future, to today. Hey Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Well, there's no flying cars and it isn't the roads they say we don't need. They tell us where we're going, there won't be any drivers. And there's no hoverboards or self-lacing shoes, but at least we're not plagued with fax machines. You may just need a lightning strike for power, since Obama and the EPA are trying to shut down most of the power plants. What the hell is a gigawatt? That's a power but the movie's future resembles the present in a couple of very strange ways. The Cubs got in the World Series and even stranger. Discover how in 1979, Biff successfully lobbied to legalize gambling and turned Hill Valley's dilapidated courthouse into a beautiful casino hotel. I just want to say one thing. God bless America. For Infowars.com, I'm David Knight. Now, as we look at the article, we see the top thing that Kid has listed here, the personal drone. And he says, flying drones appear numerous times in the Back to the Future's 2015 film, or set in 2015. And in one instance, a drone even takes aerial photos for a news organization. As we all know that drones are becoming more popular, popular not just for news organizations, but for private individuals as well. Now, another prediction that came true was weather modification. Now, to anybody who would say that weather modification is just some type of hokey conspiracy theory, I do challenge you to go look at the USA Today articles where they say that you should modify the weather during the Olympics to make sure that everything is nice and pleasant. So you can go look that up on your own time. And in the movie, Back to the Future, they have a conversation amongst themselves, Marty and Doc, and they say, hey, you know, the government can control the weather now. First, you've got to get out and change clothes. Right now, it's pouring rain. Wait five more seconds. Right on the tick. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Too bad the post office isn't as efficient as the weather service. I had been living since the father weapons on, weather weapons on. They could take a clear sky in Vietnam and rain 10 feet of water anytime they wanted on the Ho Chi Minh Trail with less than seven aircraft. And that was with primitive technology. They could create hurricanes. They could kill hurricanes. They could strengthen them. They could weaken them. They could steer them. They could control them. He came on my show, on radio and TV, and then got a visit 